Today we're going to talk about color again. Specifically, how when you put finish on a board, it's always darker on the end grain. And how maybe we can alleviate that a little bit. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a piece of pine. And just to be sure everything's on the up and up, I'm going to real quickly plane all four sides of it so that we know everything's on an equal playing field. Flip it over. Okay, and then we'll shoot the ends. Normally when you finish something, you know, we sand it beforehand. So what I've got here is I went and got fresh sandpaper. I have a 220 grit, a 320 grit, and a 400 grit. And I've labeled each side. So real quickly, I'm going to sand the entire thing with a 220 grit, which is really the highest grit most people go when they're doing something like an oil or an oil wax or a poly finish. Especially film finishes where you want something a little bit for it to grip onto. So give all the faces a nice quick sanding. Notice how it dulls up pretty quickly. Nice even sanding. I am going with the grain with proper sanding technique so that the sanding lines will not show up. And we're also going to sand the end grain. A nice even grip pattern all the way across. But I am going to do something different on this side. So I'm sanding at 220 right now. I'm then going to up it, bump it up to 320. You generally have to sand end grain longer because it's just a harder surface. And all the way up to 400. So that's the only thing different I've done to this end grain is I sanded it through two more grits from the other two surfaces. So let's clean off all the dust of the pieces. Yeah, my t-shirts are multi-purpose. They will get rid of dust. And then I've got it mixed up now so I, well, yeah, I can feel the difference. Okay, I've got a little walnut oil, kind of my preferred uh, go-to finish. Just go spread some on there, spread it in. It's going to soak in. It's going to darken up the end grain, just like all oils do. Really let it soak in as much as it wants. That's how, generally how I finish this. With oil, you put it on, wipe it off. Wipe off any excess that it doesn't soak in after about five minutes. But really, after the first coat, it's not going to get any darker. So I come over the sides. These sides, I only did with a hand plane. I didn't sand them. And then we're going to come to the end grain. Let it soak up as much as it wants. So now wipe it all down. And I want you to notice See the color difference? I mean, that is quite a bit di darker. And yet this side, it's not as dark. Which side do you think I sanded a higher grit? Those extra kind of grooves right there actually absorb more oil. Whereas when you s sand to a higher grit, there's less abrasion there, less oil, so the less fibers that are sticking up for the oil to grab onto. So you can get 
the end grain a little bit closer to the color of the long grain by simply sanding it to a higher grit. Now, if I were to have sanded this up to 400 and that up to 400, then it would be equal and this would be even darker in comparison. Once again, sanded, not sanded equally. Sanded higher, sanded equally. Higher, equally. So once again, this is one of those techniques that I'm sure most of y'all could have figured out on your own because you are just applying knowledge from one area to the other. If you remember, a tip I did a few days ago or a few episodes ago was about sanding with the grain because when you go across the grain, even at the same grit, it abrades those cross fibers and those cross fibers will absorb more oil because it's exposed end grain. So they show up after you put the finish on it. You might not see it when you're just working on it because all the colors are the same. It's when it absorbs more oil that they really pops out. And yeah, that's a headache of a lot of us woodworkers. You find your scratches after you put the finish on. Well, using that same ideology of just removing those cross grain scratches or reducing them is what we did with the end grain today. I just sanded the end grain to a higher grit so those scratch patterns were a lot smaller so less oil would be absorbed into cross end grain. It's all about what taking what you already know and applying it to a new area. So for today's bonus, I want to talk about a magazine. But before we get there, if you like this video, if you learned something from it, or this entire woodworking tip of the day series, or any of my longer form lessons, please do me a favor. Like, favorite, subscribe, do all those social medias. Visit me on Instagram, Facebook, all those other locations. And if possible, tell a friend. And if you want to support us a little bit more, patronize us a little bit more, you can visit my website, wortheffort.com where I run an online blog. I also have some uh, items I sell, such as t-shirts, hats, uh, swag, all that kind of stuff. And every little bit does help me subsidize making these videos for you. Now, I've got to admit, I don't have any magazine subscriptions anymore. I haven't for a very long time. I basically pick and choose off of the newsstand ones I like. Uh, I just find that over time, uh, they kind of accumulate. And I have a huge collection already. So I just don't get them on a monthly basis. But there's one issue I generally will buy off the newsstand almost sight unseen. It's the Fine Woodworking Special Editions. And what they do is they take some of the best projects from each of their episodes, uh, issues and their normal issues, you know, they only have like one or two nice big projects. Well, they combine them in some kind of theme and they sell those themes, shop and tool, furniture, a couple times a year. Here's one on just tables and chairs. Some of the best build articles they had out there. And I definitely picked these up because I use them as a reference. It's something I go back to time and time again. Uh, for example, right here, we've been talking about color a lot this week in wood. And they have just a quick little cheat sheet, an excerpt from one of their articles about how to combine woods easily or what types of looked good together after they've aged. It's a nice little reference chart for me. So if you see these special editions out there, flip through them. Uh, even if there's only one or two things in them at this time, they're inexpensive education and they'll be a great reference on your shelf. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I want you to remember one last thing. It is always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.